lastly, I want to bring up something that I uh, noticed in the news. Um, you know, once upon a time, before AIDS <coughs> was called AIDS, um, it was called HTLV, the human tree, human T lymphotropic virus. It was called uh, the gay cancer. So I want, I want to take advantage of being filmed to bring up a, a new disease because it become, if it becomes the next big disease in our culture, I want to see how ridiculous I sound talking about it in the early days when I call it by the wrong name or I mispronounce it or I have my facts all screwed up like if I started talking about AIDS in the early 80s. But there is a new disease. Yes, I'm afraid to even say it. It's spelled C-H-A-G-A-S. Chagas. 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 And people catch it through a mosquito-like bug called a kissing bug. And the bug does what a mosquito does. It injects the person and it takes blood out. And in the process of removing blood, it places a parasite into the person. And the parasite works its way into the bloodstream all the way to the person's heart, where it multiplies into hundreds and thousands of these parasites. And eventually, the person's heart explodes. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And now they're calling this, there's, well, what they're saying now is could this be the new AIDS? Could this be the AIDS for Americas? Plural. Because, because, there is already, I want, to, I want to say millions, but I'll just, I don't want to look back on this like a time capsule and be embarrassed that I didn't get my facts straight. There's already hundreds and hundreds of thousands of cases in South America, Chile, and Arizona's favorite, Mexico. I live in Arizona, and I just had Mexican food for dinner. And I'm certainly not going to miss an opportunity to really point out what the writing on the wall looks like on this baby. Because anyone who was alive in the early 80s knows how fast we went from one article in People magazine to national hysteria and let's quarantine all the queers. I mean, that happened overnight. All they had to do was print it in People magazine in one article, and the world went nuts. But now we have the internet. And this is really what people are talking about on the internet. You can look this up and it's, it's devastating because there's already um, tens of thousands of cases in the United States from people who are from these countries or people who have visited these countries. There is no cure, and it's treatable, not curable, but it's manageable if it's caught early on. The problem is there's no symptoms until you have a heart attack. <clears throat> Go online, look this up, and see what they're saying about Charles Darwin and how he died. They're saying he died of this. And just like HIV, this has been around a long time. <clears throat> I live in a state where we hate, we hate immigrants. We hate them. I am of a people who used to be foreigners in a strange land where the entire country believed it made sense to exterminate us. 
I live in a state where we are just dying for an excuse to just run them out. I mean, who would have thought that it was possible in a climate where people hate Christians so much and people hate gays so much that the next Holocaust could actually be with people from another country that live in our country. But when you turn on your computer and you see a headline on Yahoo, MSN, AOL that says there's a new AIDS in America and it's coming from these places, including Mexico. That's not a little thing. That's not a rumor. That's something completely different. Completely different. And again, you better go check. <laughs> um, again, we are talking about what it means to be in Christ. And once upon a time, there was a Christian agenda to blame all the bad things that happened in America on the queers. It went all the way to 9-11. Jerry Falwell said that, but other people said it too. And they're saying it now with the, the, the conflicts around gay marriage. We live in a country that is facing its worst economy since the Great Depression and looking for anyone and anything to blame. And one of the hottest topics in this country is that we're being bled dry by the immigrants. It's a nice way for me to say illegal aliens, isn't it? But let's be fair. Let's be fair. I didn't set up the system. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make it where they're working here and they're making money. I didn't do this. So I just call them immigrants. I don't know who's who and what's what. And it's none of my business. But I promise you, just like 9-11, when people that looked like they were from the Middle East, whether they were born here or there, became our enemies, is everything okay? Um, we are living in a climate where we are already looking at people like our enemy already. We, we, we hate the Middle Easterners, and, and, and in the state at least, we certainly hate um, the Mexicans, because they could be illegals. But now they're announcing in the news that, that these illegal aliens that are coming from impoverished portions of Mexico could be bringing us the new AIDS. does the new creature in Christ say to that? And, and it's a cheesy way, I know, to tie it back into what I was saying, but it goes so deep. Because who, who do we hear talk more than Christians? That's what's so weird. Who do we see on the news more? Who is going to say, God wants us to? And are we the people that are going to hug these people and give them health care? so they don't die these horrible, horrible, painful deaths? Are we going to give them a chance to get tested once they come up with the test so that before people are symptomatic can get treatment? Are we going to allow them to have treatment? Because right now, treatment's unaffordable for anyone. Anyone. People, it's, un, uh, it's un, unaffordable. And by the way, there's uh, on average 20,000 deaths a year from this disease before now, already. So it's already been around. But now they're talking about it, people are gonna get all worked up, and they've put a color on it, and they said, this is where it's coming. And I'm not saying it's not coming, I'm not saying there's not something to think about here, but I'm saying people still want to put all the queers on an island and, and put up an electrical fence so they can't get out and make more gay people. <laughs> They still want to do that. And we already want to drive the illegals out of our country. <coughs> we already want to put martial law on our borders to kill people who try to come up. We're, all, we're already there. 
add to the mix. Hey, they're bringing the new AIDS. What? Um, international travel? Now what? International commerce? Now what? <clears throat> All the food we get from Mexico. I don't mean the Mexican restaurants that I go to every day of my life, but I'm, I'm saying worse than that. What happens in this country if this becomes the new epidemic? And in all fairness, we usually don't see the headlines until there's already a real concern, do we, when it comes to stuff around disease? Because, because that's the one area in life that these publications can't play with without major consequence. And remember when we read in People magazine about the new gay cancer and what it's been like and what it was like that year, just that year alone, how bad it got and how fast the Christians were to condemn. I said jokingly, but not jokingly, that from now on when I deal with a Christian, I can't stand the way they're talking. Just challenge them about their new creature. And is this your new creature? Is this your new creature? I really wonder, once again, as we face leprosy among us, where Jesus is in anybody. Because when AIDS happen, I have no memory of Christianity embracing anybody. Nope. They went way Old Testament and yelled unclean. And again, one of the most hated groups in this country is people from our neighboring countries that are poor and living below our standards who try to come to our country and now we have news reports that their countries are expected to be completely devastated by what we currently are nicknaming the new AIDS that is one of the scariest things I've heard of since the old AIDS since the old AIDS And just wait, just wait till there's one case that has passed through food. Just one case that has passed through food. One case. And what's so interesting is anyone who's like me who gets eaten alive by bugs constantly, there's not a day in my life I don't have a bug bite. On my, I have two bad toes from the trash can, and I've got one toe on this foot that has a, a bug bite that has made me crazy for the last 24 hours. It, it itches and stings so bad. It's all the sugar I eat. But, you know, they find me so sweet and tasty. But seriously, I've always been, and I, I, I know a lot of people that are fair-skinned that say that, that we get eaten alive. Well, guess what? That's how you get the new AIDS. You can be a total slut in America now because you just need to be afraid to have a bug bite. Isn't that scary? Terrifying. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. You know what we're going to find out? We're going to find out that so many heart attacks in the last 10 years have come from this. Sudden heart attacks, they just never looked. We're going to find out, and we're going to find out it's in the food. And I love the fact that it's coming through a bug called the kissing bug because it swaps tongues, basically. It's injecting you and sucking out, putting something in. It's interesting, because I said, what happens when the next AIDS comes? The thing we don't know the name for yet? What's it called? Chagas? Am I saying it right? The new AIDS. But the old AIDS, when, you know, what happens when the next thing comes? I always said this, and it's not just through, uh, doesn't, isn't just passed through blood and bodily fluids. What if it's, uh, what if it's passed through saliva? Is your, uh, are, are your utensils at restaurants ever going to be clean enough for you? You know, what if it's passed through kissing? Well, I was close. Passed through a kissing bug. Really close. But the minute 
the minute there's a possibility that it's passed through saliva and food in this country, we will all exercise our right to bear arms. Everything will change overnight because we are waiting for this. We, we as a nation are waiting for an explosion within our country. We're waiting for a division because we're constantly looking for it. And sadly, I think the we in that sentence are the people that are supposed to be new creations in Christ. I think that's who's behind it more than anybody. I think Christians are behind all the anti-gay stuff in this country more than anybody. And uh, I see, you know what, forgive me, I see you Christians posting on Facebook, you know, get those fucking Mexicans out of here. I, I, how can people talk like that? I'm serious, I see that with people I know who go to church. I'm serious, and I'm like, how do you do that? And the, and, and the stuff you say about Obama's nationality and the words you use, not, the, not your point. Everybody has a right to their opinion, I guess, whatever that means. But how it's said, and the anger and the hatred behind it, are, are we new creatures in Christ, or are we just Christian Americans who want to control how this country looks and what color it is? And by the way, when do we have a choice how we get to die in this country? I mean, in this life, isn't that still in the hands of Almighty God? I mean, whatever happened to we get before the Lord and one day at a time, and He sustains us one day at a time, not to worry about tomorrow because sufficient is the evil of today. No, I'm going to worry about what the Mexicans are bringing into my country. Horrible. So I said it back in the day, Hug a homosexual, especially if they have AIDS. Give them a kiss. Can't get it from kissing. Love them. You know what? Hug a Mexican. <laughs> Hug a Mexican. Please don't take the Mexican restaurants away. Please, please don't cart off all my neighbors and put them in uh, internment <laughs> camps because they might have been bit by a weird mosquito type bug. I'm serious. I like the look on your face, by the way. You look actually very sad by what I say, because it is sad, isn't it? It's horrible sad. It's not scary. I'm not scared. I just told you I would have been happy not being born, so if I really do go to heaven when I die, I'm good. <laughs> but, <clears throat> and by the way, there's a lot worse ways to die than a massive heart attack. You know, that's like a bad second. <laughs> that's... There's a lot worse. Uh, by the way, I think AIDS is a lot worse, especially in the beginning. So it's all how you look at it. Sorry, guys, if that sounded weird. But who are we? Who are we? we? Are we new creatures in Christ? And what do we do with that? Do we love people? Do we love all people? Or do we just love the people that meet our standards and they're the color that we like or the orientation that we, we agree with? Or, or uh, they're here legally or illegally? My gosh. Everybody on this planet who does not honor Jesus as Lord and Savior is here illegally. Is here illegally. They are taking from God what's not theirs, and that is life. Because they are not honoring Him with theirs. And we need to focus on getting as many people right with God. Especially if, God forbid, we're facing another epidemic another epidemic but I have no understanding about politics I have no understanding about illegal aliens and what's right or wrong and borders and I have no understanding of any of this I really don't and I don't ever want to be mistaken for an expert but I know that the worst person on the planet, God loves as much as he loves me. And he loves me more than anybody. So that's how it works. He loves us all exactly the same, and it's immensely. And we can't, and when we start dancing when Osama bin Laden dies, and we're dancing in the streets, we're going to dance when they lynch the, the queers, and we're going to dance when the Mexicans die off from this horrible disease. We're going to be those people. 
And I know I'm not one of those people. And I know that my God is not behind that. And I don't think God sees our, our, our nationality and our status and if we're where we're supposed to be in the right country, how we got here, or any... I don't think God's dealing with that. I think God's dealing with the most important aspect, is, and that is that part that lives forever. And I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, and I don't want to take sides. I just know that I'm going to reach anybody who's nice enough to get close enough to be reached for as long as I can. And if someone is sick, I am totally not afraid of catching anything. I am totally not afraid of, of sitting down with someone and hugging someone and letting them cry in my arms and praying for their healing because I totally expect God to save them and I totally expect God to move because I'm a new creature in Christ and I know God wants them to be a new creature in Christ. And if they're a new creature, then it's irrelevant how they got to that moment in time. Amen? Gosh.